welcome to an integrated dynamics tutorial for Minecraft 1.12. The topic today is making a operator filter and using the pipe operator. I've got chest A here on the left and chest B here on the right. What I've made is a filter that's a pipe operator that takes a couple inputs and it decides which items should get filtered out of this chest. And if I just shift click this in here, you'll see it goes into the wrong spot. We're dealing with an operator, a virtual piped operator. And it's good. So what's going to happen here is I have these items. And notice too, the ID numbers 0351, 0351, slash 2, and slash 3. So it actually is going to filter these properly. And there's nothing in this chest, of course. And I thought it'd be cool to use an ender pouch. That way, remotely, you could actually set up a filter. You didn't have to come down to this mining operation if you had a system like this. Now you can see these items are gone. They've got sent over here. Because there is an inventory reader that gets a list of what filters you have set. And then through these opcodes that I'll show, a filter is made. So this was my first attempt really trying to learn operators, and I ran into problems immediately. So I stopped by the uh, Cyclops Discord server, and I had help right away. So if I just set this up real quickly, I'll show it on cam so you can see everything. Guess I went like this last time. I'll try to follow the same steps that are in the corner of the screen. If you just search for the less than symbol, you'll notice it wants a number and a number to do the comparison, and then you get the result. But that's like a, a static equation. If you use an operator, and you search for this, what it actually does is it kind of makes an empty function. And I might be using the wrong terminology. This is just how I understand it. But basically now we've made an operator that's going to take a number and another number and I'll put a Boolean, a true or false, which is the goal here. And if we click this E, we can type less than. So that's the first piece. Second piece is an integer of zero. And the goal here for these two pieces is we're basically trying to move any item that matches my filter, regardless of the stack size. If you don't use this and you have a filter of one here, it will not move any items over if the stack size is not one. It has to be one exactly. So by doing this, as long as there's an item, it'll get moved. Okay, the third item on the list is going to this inventory reader and getting the actual list of what's in there. And we'll see right now the list is actually empty because it's empty. Grab the labeler, filter, list. And of course, it's worth taking the time to label everything. See, I forgot to label that. So now for the fourth item. Again, this is going to be an operator. But I wanted to show the static value too. So for this item list count, what's going to happen here is it's going to take in a list and take in an item ID, I guess. And it's going to output an integer. So it's just going to count in that list of whatever item you give it, how many is there. But see how if you had a list of many items and you're giving it one item, it's only going to count that one thing. We need to make it more dynamic. And this is my understanding. I might not be completely correct. So if somebody who knows more is watching, please let me know. Ah, item, item, list count. So it's worth taking time and looking at the syntax. But again, we're feeding in a list. We're giving it an item to look at. And then it's going to output how many are in this, in that list of that item. 
for this operator. I should give it a name. Item list count. So basically, these two are going to work together, and these two are going to work together. And then we're going to pipe the two outputs to the final result. So searching for apply, this is kind of where the magic happens is an operator has to go to this apply and I'm only going to use, I'm only feeding it one aspect, whatever these are called. There's situations where you'd use apply to, but we, we don't want to do that. And I'm not exactly sure why I'm just uh, following the tutorial that was nicely written up for me. So making the next thing on the list, looks like this and observe the notation that they give me and how I convert it to, to look what it looks like on here. That took me a little while to figure out. I had a hard time reading it. And I'll be naming everything the same. So this is now, I think, what is this below zero, bigger than zero probably is what that stands for. Then the next one, the item list count, and the filter list to get another applied operator. Filtered zero, I think. I'm not really sure what that stands for. It doesn't matter, just the name. So taking a step back here and looking at the the last codes that we've made, the F0 and the B0, what's basically happening is this list that's up in this chest, it's going to get applied to this operator that takes the list, looks at what items are in here. See how that's dynamic? Because we don't really know. It's just whatever is in there. That item is dynamic because of that. It returns an integer. And so whatever that integer is, it could be zero, could be null, I suppose. But that integer is then passed to the B0. And the B0 is just checking that it's greater than zero. So if there's an item in that chest and it's greater than zero, send it up. So I want to pipe the filtered list bigger than zero. Call this one final. So we come down here. We throw final in, and it's not happy because I forgot to put these in, the variable store. And it's always helpful, too, to leave them in a certain order. Operator thing, operator thing. Again, my terminology is not great. Final, and then bigger than zero. We got a green check mark. Everything's happy. And just for my own curiosity, if we take a look at this final code that was made using kind of the same syntax as you can see that's used in the corner of the screen here with these two uh, colons. We're taking an item and we're getting a Boolean. So I think what's happening is based on whatever items in this chest, this operator's taken that item and it's going to decide it's going to go through this tunnel. So it's very important to learn how to read those, and I'm still trying to fully wrap my head around it. Okay, so let's say we have an ore miner, and we've got some ore going on, and it's coming in. And we want certain ore to go to certain systems. Let's say we want to process boron and lithium in a certain way, different than wherever these other guys are going. If you have a dynamic filter, you can be anywhere in your base and say, hey, you know what? I want you to get filtered. And so now they show up here. And these guys are left. 